Hi there everyone. Today I'm going to show you the biggest beetle I've ever found on the island. It's really amazing. This is a longhorn beetle in the family Cerambicidae. It is called the ponderous borer or Trichonema spiculatus. Once it was named Ergati spiculatus, but entomologists decided to rename it. These beetles are known for their really long antennae. These antennae are often as long or longer than the length of the insect's body. It's huge. My neighbor gave me this beetle after it landed on the side of her cabin. She didn't want it, but I did. <laughs> I love beetles. Adult ponderous borers can reach sizes of over three inches long. Timberworms and chainsaw blades. If you like history, here's something for you to look up. I'll put some links in the comments section under the video for you to check out. The man in this photo is named Joe Cox. He was a logger who lived in Oregon in the 1940s and invented a new kind of chainsaw blade after watching the larvae of this beetle in nature. He saw how the timber worm cuts through wood by chewing side to side and he adapted his chainsaw blade design to match the cutting action of the beetle larvae. The chainsaw blade was put into production in the late 1940s and it became an immediate success. It made it easier to cut down a lot of trees, more trees than these beetles would ever cut down. The ponderous borer isn't a pest. They only use dead or dying trees for their development. They are important in forest ecosystems as decomposers and nutrient recyclers, so other trees can use the parts of the dead tree as they break it down. We have learned it isn't wise to cut down all of the trees in our forest and that it is important to steward these resources wisely. We need our forest and so do other animals like owls, woodpeckers, and many other species of wildlife. Also, these larvae are really big. They can be over two and a half inches long. Fuzzy Wuzzy. Here I've got a blue arrow pointing to the belly of my beetle. It's actually the ventral view of the beetle's abdomen, which is covered with lots of little hairs, and it makes it look quite fuzzy and cuddly, almost like a teddy bear. The second picture is a lateral view of the head and the thorax of the beetle, and you can see how hard and armor-plated it looks, which is uh, added protection for the beetle. What big eyes and jaws you have. Here I've labeled some of the parts of the head of my beetle. You can see the compound eye, the mandibles, the maxillary palp, and the antennal scape. So the compound eyes are multifaceted and these beetles can see quite well even in the dark. They have strong mandibles for chewing. They have the maxillary palp which helps them manipulate food into their mouth. And the antennal scape is the first segment of the antennae where they attach to the head of the insect. This female beetle is ovipositing or laying eggs. The video clip was filmed in the San Juan Islands and submitted to my Facebook page Bugs of the San Juan Islands by Joy Cartissier on Orcas. This short clip is pretty amazing. Here are four books about beetles that you might be interested in reading. Bonkers About Beetles, Beetle Boy, A Beetle is Shy, and Beetle Busters. Even better, try writing and illustrating your own book to share with your family and friends. Thanks for watching.